and here is a question problem statement count of subarrays whose maximum element is greater than k so if you see you want to find it out the subarrays and what is subarray first of all we need to understand what is subarray anyone what is subarray one is array two is array one comma two two comma three exactly exactly so anything which are continuously right those are the subarray something like one two three one two two three and one two three these are your subarrays okay uh Jivita has uh, told very correctly they are arrays within array so one is a single length array two is a single length array three is a single length array one and two are two length array two and three are th two length array and three length array is the array itself so something like all the subsets but they should be arrayed only so one and three cannot be a subarray okay one and three cannot be subarray because they are not array one and three right if you combine one and three both they are not array they are subset but they are not array clear so that is a simple thing now what is the brute force approach that you want to find it out that let's say for the question itself for k equals to 2 how many subarrays are there whose sum is greater than or equal to 2 so if you see there are three subarrays whose sum is greater than 2 one is 3 itself another is 2 and 1 3 so 3 is also greater than 2 3 is also greater than 2 3 and 2 5 so 5 is also greater than 2 and this sub itself 3 plus 2 plus 1 6 is also greater than 2 correct so your answer should be 4 if you do not consider this as an a subarray why because obviously this always the full length array is always a subarray so i'm not considering this as my subarray let's say in my solution space then my answer is 3 right so this is my answer now if i want to find it out with the code this thing how can i so if this question is given to you that if one two three is there and k equals to two and you want to find it out the count of subarray whose not some sorry maximum element is greater than k then how can you find it out even if it's a maximum element or sum, it's perfectly fine there is some slight difference in logic of summation and finding the maximum element but in that case also if you want to find it out this thing or some what logic you can apply i can take two pointers one is pointing at the starting element and the end element and uh, try to iterate and sum make it someone say the difference no? okay that is one thing now anywhere here have i asked he it is sorted that's not that's first thing if you see i have not taken example of one two three but that's a pretty neat technique the interviewer will use they will give you such kind of things one two three but they have not mentioned sort sorted array so you have to be very much clear when the details are given so that shows that are you while while writing documentation or reading documentation are you are you keen in attending uh, all the all the attention points or all the details right so it shows your attention in interview and that's very important thing so here sorted is not given so even if the example is given sorted i cannot use the logic of sorted so what i can do further i think jivita also said the same thing first and next two pointers approach but with that two pointer approach also you will not be able to find it out why because three and one when you find it out their sum is four but three and one doesn't create got it so two pointer will not work here also the brute force however we can do is to create all the subarray can we do that let's create all the subarrays and whenever i'm creating all the subarrays let's say one two three one two two three one two three what i'll do is i'll keep that is in this subarray two is it greater than uh, what you can say uh, two no 
three is greater than two? Yes. One and two, what is the largest number? Two. Now, is it greater than two? No. Two and three, what is the greatest number? Three. Is it greater than two? Yes. One, two, and three, which is greatest number? Three. Okay. Is it greater than two? Yes. Answer is three. So either you can find maximum number here or do the sum and then find. Well, if this two will be different questions, but the logic will be same for the brute force. Create all the subarray and find it out desired result. Right? When you give, when there is, so see, here is a tricky thing. Okay. In interview, you have to be very much sure. Why? Because now some points I'll talk about only in terms of interview. Why? Because those things are very much important for interview only. Some things are not meant for interview, but for real world scenario. So I'll take an example in that, that in real world scenario, you have to be careful here. Okay. So accordingly, I'll take it up. It's not like I'll be only explaining interviews. So point is for such kind of question, if you give brute force, to your interviewer and if your interviewer wants to test your coding skill he'll say okay code for brute force we'll optimize it later the problem with sometimes brute force is you have to write more tricky code than the optimized one you will see with this first of all can anyone tell me how can i create all sub arrays with my one two three as an array or any any array how to create all the sub arrays Logic is there. I have to find it out all single length, double length, and three length. That means for all length, I have to find it out all the subarrays. How can I do that now? Yes, using recursion you can do. But let's say yeah, right now recursion is not there in the picture because recursion we haven't learned. That's the first thing. And second thing, recursion using internal space, which is stack. And that will be higher complexity than a simple code. So that's why I'm trying to find it out. Is there a way simply you can find it out a way such that you can write it down a code. So like, um, like if we have a max, I mean, length of oh, the array is three, so we can have, I mean, decrement, uh, keep decrementing like, like uh, first decrement to one. So two length will find and then one like that. Yes, we can do that. So something like that, what uh, you're mentioning, it's just perfectly correct. Okay. Something like that, that first will call for three length array. Obviously it, it is there. Then I'll reduce the length to two. So there'll be one for loop on this, right? Now this two, how can I find it out? So for this two, what I have to do is this sub I have to find it out. And then this sub I have to find it out correct so i'll be iterating for each each length i'll be iterating over the whole loop once more time to do for two three and one two correct and for one again i'll iterate over the array to find it out one length all the arrays so how many loops it will take in a worst case code if you write three loops it will take i'll show you though it's a coding part i think you should be able to do that but let me show you first is on the array length you are iterating from one length two length and three length something like that okay now for the two pointer approach i and j which is pointing to both length both the end you are writing two four loops got it and in that way whatever so this code if you print it will print something like this one one two one two three two two three and three all the sub arrays of length one two and three all the times so what i'm doing is one one two one two three then two two three three then three onwards i cannot do but if you see in worst case the time complexity seems what in a simplistic way one for loop another for loop another for loop and that to nested, that means order of, you can still reduce it to n square, but even if you reduce to n square, it will be n square, which is large. n cube or n square, they are large enough only. 
we can still reduce it to something else. And this is my IDO one code link in which this code is written and performed. Okay, this is the output of that. So you can go and check that as well. For such simple code, I'm not giving you that. For some complex codes, I'll give you. Okay, now, as I told you that the array is not given sorted and the array can be larger as well, then let's think about some tricky approach. Tricky in the sense, some apply, try to apply thinking pattern. And when I say thinking pattern, sometimes visualization will help you a lot. And what is that visualization? We'll see. So here is a practice. So that's why I'm giving you the solution. Take some random example. Can you see the array question? Well, it's not been hidden by the menu or something. You can see the whole screen, right? What options I'm chasing for annotate and square, share that you are not seeing, right? Yes. Uh, not seeing, right? Not seeing the one. Okay. First line so, is optimization. Ah, uh, so directly if you see the optimization array uh, without any hindrance, then then it's perfect. That's what I wanted to know. So three, four, one, two, five in K equals to two. So take some random example of a small size and large size. Okay. And then try to think that what is the problem statement? What is the solution for this examples? And from that visualization, can you think to create some solution? That is what you need to do. Okay. So here is what we'll do. Let's say I have taken one example, three, four, one, two, five, and K equals to two. So I know that all the sub arrays it will create of length one, length two, length three, and length four. This is my answer will be one, two, one, two. Okay. They won't be counted, but three, four, five. Anyone with the array of three, four, and five will have a maximum number three, four, and five, which is larger than two. Because here we don't have to find sum. What we are finding it out is, is that any subarray whose values, whose largest value is greater than two, it has any value which is larger than two. So if I create any subarray with three, so let's say three, four, one, I create. At least I have three, which is greater than two. If I create four, one, two, I have four. If I create one, two, five, I have five. Got it. Only the sub arrays, which will be missed from all the solution points. So here I have written all the solutions. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, four, one, two, five. Right? Two length all. Three length all, four length all, and five length all. All sub arrays I have written over here. Out of this all sub arrays, only two will be reduced. 1, 2, and 1, 2. So if I know the value or some way that I can create this answer, rather than finding, I can just create that what is the count of this? What is the count of all? Sorry. What is the count of all possible subarrays? Mathematically, I can do that. So if what is the whatever is the count of subarray minus if I can do this, because creation of this is giving me order of n square or n cube. But pictorially, if I see, if I do, if I can find it out this too, and with one, two only, whatever the sub arrays I can create, one, two, one, two, three sub arrays I can create. If I reduce, then all these sub arrays will be remaining. And for that, any value has greater than k. So in this five is the in this four is there, in this five is there, at least one value will be there, which is greater than K. Right. So if I can find it out something such that count, yes, mathematically is possible. And if I can find it out this, it's simply doable. Isn't it or not? But over here, one and two are together. That's why you may think something like, okay, I can find it out all the two length one and two ka whatever the number of sub arrays will get created. So for two array, one and two, how many sub arrays can be created? Three, one, two, and one, two. So that I'll directly reduce and do that. But no, take some other example. Take one more example. Let's say three. Now here, if you take the example three, 
your space where you are reducing this is changed your values which are less than k less than k or less than or equal to k are 1 2 and 3 and in that combination are you not creating 1 2 3 1 2 2 3 and 3 2 1 1 2 3 like that you are not reducing this three length all ones like you did in previous one because three is at front one two are at end so you are not finding out three length all the count of possible subarrays but what you are doing try to trying to find it out is that that wherever it is three then with three how many subarrays i can create such that four and five will not be there right so that you are trying to find it out and not this so how can you now find it out this that is my question if you can think on this it should be contiguous right contiguous subarray exactly exactly so this one and two they are continuously so for this i have created this kind of thing now i'm just giving my further for further more example if it would be something like this 3 1 2 4 5 then all the combination of this 3 1 2 something like 3 1 2 3 1 1 2 and 3 1 2 all possible combinations will have some or sorry any number which is not greater than k k is 3 Three is not greater than three, right? So if I find it out, any contiguous, contiguous means in continuation. Values which are smaller or equal to k. For that, I'll find it out all. Consider that you have a larger value, larger, uh, uh, what you can say, uh, array, something like three. Sorry, three, one, two, four, five, six, three, ah, uh, zero, and two, something like that. So all the subarrays created by this, all the subarrays created by this, some still for the large, let's say eight, nine, and one. Then all the subarrays created by single one. If I find it out all the subarrays of this plus this plus this, that I reduce from the all possible subarrays, then my answer will be that is what we are discussing, right? So far clear. This is simple approach that from the visualization we have created. Clear everyone. So my solution will be that I'll try to find it out. Obviously, I loop from one to n. that is simple thing any element which is greater than k i'll skip so obviously in loop this is my algorithm in a loop any element which is greater than k i'll skip second step any element which is less than or equal to k i'll find it out the continuous subarray of that length something like over here i did 1 2 in previous example also i did 3 1 2 something like that once i find it out that what i find it out in a same space what are the subarrays of this so something like for 1 2 i found it out all the subarrays 3 somewhere i found it out 3 1 again then all the subarrays and i'll do the summation of those and after all summation is find summation of subarray okay what i'll do is fourth point is total count total subarray minus this sum subarray if i do then this is my solution correct that's a simple approach that's a very simple approach So as I said over here, let's say if k equals to three, three one two one two three one and three one two, all I have find it out. Why? Because this is three one two together. So continuous subarray I'm finding three one two k sath all that things. And I have taken one more example in which 
After five also we have three, three and zero, let's say. So for three zero also we need to consider. Correct. And in that way it will be clear. So then let's, once we have understood the logic and also algorithm, let's try to write it down the algorithm. Loop from one to N, I equals to zero to N. Remove all the elements which are gray. So when I say remove, don't consider that. You don't have to remove from the input array itself. Count the contiguous elements which are less than or equal to K and find its subarrays and sum it. Continue the loop. At the end, whatever the sum is, reduce it from the total sum and give it the answer. That is your algorithm. Let's try to start the coding part of it. First, let's write the loop. Then second step, we'll write the way to ignore K, ignore elements which are greater than K, and then we'll try to log try logic on this third part. Okay, step by step. First part, if a function is given, how to write down a loop in a simplistic way for i equals to zero to i less than n i plus plus. Clear so far? I don't think so, any issue will be there. Next part, if array of i is greater than k in a same loop, continue. I don't want to do any further logic. I'm just removing k, removing elements which are greater than k. So continue means this loop will be skipped and for next i, this loop will continue. Any doubt so far with a continue? No, right? Because this code you'll have to try to perform. You, you remember the logic. Try to perform in your coding language, either in C, C++ or Java. And second thing, if even if you're coding in the language in which I'm teaching, you practice on your own. Remember the logic and try to code whenever you are free. Whatever the questions I have done over here, then only then your practice will be there. And at the end, you'll get a best coding practice and best interview cracking, uh, you know, hands-on. Otherwise, you'll be out of touch. So have handy practice of each and every code that I take over here. Keep a logic ready in your mind. Read the question and try to solve it. Okay. So whenever I take a question, keep a note of the question. If an algorithm I have taken, try to keep a try to create a note of algorithm that I have created and try to write down code on your own and compile it. You will see some errors when you are compiling and gradually you will write error free code that is necessary. Okay, so that is the hint I'm giving you. Then only then you will be doing proper practice. And second thing, whenever you submit an assignment, I'll see that in Git repo, have you written all the code? Let's say count subarray was not given in assignment, but have you written it or not? Okay, that is what a practice means. You have to do all that things. Okay, not giving all that things. Moving further. I have reduced all the values. I have removed all the elements which are greater than K whenever I'm going with this line of code. That means I'm not creating any logic on that because any value which is greater than k it will create any subarrays whose value will be greater than k so i don't have to worry about that so i have reduced it next part is what next part is i have to find it out the count of because if the value is not greater than k i have to find it out next all values which are less than k so what is the next part let me write it down. First of all, the next part is if it is not greater than K, it will be always less than K, less than or equal to K, less than or equal to K. What I need to find it out, find, let's say this kind of thing was there. Let's say four, three, one, uh, five, zero, two, three, five, four, something like that. And K equals to three. So in four, you have reduced it. You have removed it, right? In continuation. Now, when you find a three, which is less than or equal to three, K equals to three, you need to find it out this count three and one, right? Then when you find five, you need to find the sum zero, two, and three, that length, correct? That you want to find it out. So how can you find it out? 
whenever you find any value which is less than three, again you write it down a for loop. That wherever my i is, keep my i as it is until i is less than n. And array of i is less than or equal to k i plus plus. So three, one, five. I keep on increasing until until array of i is less than k. So three, one, I'll find and at five, I'll stop this array. And I'll keep some count incremented, count plus plus, because three and one, all the sub arrays of three and one will be reduced from my solution. All the sub arrays from zero to n three will be reduced from my sub array. So to do so, I'll write it down such kind of another for loop. Clear so far? So that is the next part. I'm finding out all the continuous elements, contiguous elements, which are less than or equal to K. So for I, wherever it is, I less than N and array of I less than or equal to K, I plus plus count plus plus. I'm doing keep on increasing count. Now, as I told you that in previous example, also I have taken, or if I take some further more examples, I can show you quickly furthermore. I don't have to reduce or keep on increasing this count. That means, let's say, say for this example, three, four, one, two, five, K equals to three. So for three, first of all, I find the count one, and then I stop. And then for one, two, I find a count. So total, how many count happen? Total count is three, one, two. So total three. So with three length sub array, how many sub array, three length array, how many sub array can be created? One, two, three. Okay. One, two. Two, three and one, two, three. So total is three plus two, five plus one, six. So I have to reduce six, but do I have to reduce six from here? No, I have to reduce four only. That means all the sub arrays that I can create from three, which is from one sub array, how many create? You can create one only. And from two length, how, how many you can create? Three only. So there's summation you need to do. All the values, contiguous sub array, some contiguous sub array, and that count is, let's say two. So with that two, how many sub array you can create? This count is one, then how many sub array you can create? That you need to find and do the sum, correct? If I take further more example, then it is something like this. For three, zero, I'm finding out all the sub arrays. Three, zero, three, zero, because K equals to three. And then for one, two, I'm finding out all sub arrays. One, two, and one, two. So for this length two, all the sub array to the count of sub array and for one two, length two for all the sub arrays three. So that I'm reducing. This six I'm reducing from all. If I just keep on increasing the count one, two, three, four, then with four length, how many sub arrays can be created? One, two, three, four, single length, this one, two, two, three, three, four, then one, two, three, Two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. How many is getting created? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Ten can be created sub arrays. Now over here also you can try to apply the logic as well. How many? How from four ten is created? Four into five by two. From two, how the three created? Two into three by two. Right. So mathematical equation also you keep in your mind and create it that how are you finding it out? Okay, so again, move back to our code. Okay, moving back to our code. What was our code last we have written? I am just finding it out all the count. I'm finding it out all the count. But before this loop, I'll reduce, keep the count equals to zero because again, I have to start from scratch, right? Three, four, I found it out. Let's say in this example, huh? three and zero count to two, then one and two count should be starting from zero, one and two. So that's why I have made count equals to zero and count plus plus. Okay. Now in the same for loop, once I found it out count, I'll find it out the length of sub array count multiply by count plus one by two n into n plus one by two. That I'll increase into count of all sub arrays, which is like over here. With three zero length two, what are the number of sub arrays I can find? Three. So that I'm storing into S. This is I'm storing as count. 
And again, I'll mic the counter equals to zero when I find it out such four. And with one, two, again, I'll store it at end to count two. And again, I'll store that three plus two into three by two. So total is six. So this six I'm reducing in S at the end. Got it. So I'm creating that count and at the end, let's say subarray, I find it out at the end n into n plus one by two minus the, all the subarrays, which are less than of the given count that I'm reducing. This is my answer. This is my answer. Now let's see working this code. Ah, this is there, right? So if you see in C++, I have written, I have taken some example, four, three, one, two, and five. So with four, three, one, two, and five, how many total subarrays will get created with one, two, three, four, five, five length, five into six by two. 15, 15 such, such, such subarrays will be created, but three, one, and two, that means three length, all the subarrays, because K equals to three, all those will be reduced. Right, all those will be reduced. So, how many such subarrays you can find it out with the length three, three, one, and two? Three, one, two. So, three multiply by four, four, 12 by two, six. So, 15 minus six answer is nine. That should be coming up. What are those nines that you might be feeling? What are those nines? So, here are those nines. What are the nines which are greater than? Which are which are which nine subarrays are there whose value at least one LU is greater than k equals to three? So here are the subarrays four, then four, three, then four, three, one, then four, three, one, and two, then four, three, one, two, and five. Correct? Then three, one, two, and five, one, two, and five two and five and five. These are the subarrays for which there is at least one element which is greater than K. Let's count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So this is my nine. And that is what I have created. Now, use this link. Okay. I'm pointing it out over here. Use this link for it and try to change your input array and see that. Is it perfectly working code for rest of the types of input as well? You can do that. That's the first thing just to see whether whatever the input, whether this code we have written, it's perfectly fine or not. Okay. So far clear. So it was fairly simple if you visualize it and understand it. This is the next question. Replace every element by the multiplication of previous and next. Something like if you have input array 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, you have to replace. That means in a same array, your output should be, as I said, A only, should be 8. Why? Because 2 and 4 are 8. Because it's a first element. The same way last element eight and seven is 56. So if you see A of I multiply by A of next, I have done. But from next point onwards, like 10, 10 is coming from the previous element two, next element five. So two and five's multiplication, 10 is coming in between. Four and seven's multiplication, 28 coming between. 5 and 8's multiplication, 40 is coming in between, and 7 and 8 and next element, their multiplication should be coming at 56. But as next element is not there, I am taking up 8. Okay. So only for the ages, I'm considering A of i and A of i plus 1. But for rest of the cases, I'm doing perfectly A of i minus 1 and A of i plus 1. Their multiplication, I am substituting with A of i. You can do it very simply, but as it's a replace in a same element, 
if you write it down exactly what will happen is that you will lose out the previous element something like if 2 and 4's multiplication i write it down 8 right if i'm replacing on the go in a simple code then 2 and 4's multiplication i have updated to 8 and now my input array is 8 4 5 7 and 8 now i lose out this information of 2 and that's why next element instead of 4 it should be 5 multiplied by 2 instead of that 5 multiplied by 8 40 will happen that i don't want so this only you have to take care how will you take care apart from that this is a fairly simple question right apart from that it's a fairly simple question maybe which which element you are processing one option a variable sorry suppose like you are doing iterating the two right so store in a temporary variable two and do it no? okay so let's say That's i'm storing it to temporary variable two then i'm doing this eight and ten eight is perfectly fine then at the place of four two multiply by five because temporary is two two multiply by five ten i did so my answer is eight ten i did it over here but again i lose out the information of four so before after multiplying before storing 10, again, I'll take the temporary 4. So 4 I have taken. Now, next element, A after 8 and 10, it, it, I'm coming at 5. So 5 should be 4 multiplied by 7. 28 I'm doing. And before 28, I'm doing this 5. I'm copying it at somewhere. 5. Is that the way you're talking about? Yes, Daval. Yeah. Perfect. Do you see any problem with that? A space complexity? No, space complexity won't have happened. Why? Because you are storing only one variable. If you are using extra array, then order of n space complexity will be there. But if you are using just extra array, then it's fine. Extra variable, then it's fine. You are not using the whole space. Correct. So if I just write it down the same approach, Okay, furthermore, very simply. Yeah, so if I use extra array, it will increase my space complexity, but that is not the one I wanted because I wanted to replace. That is what the question is. That's why. So I wanted something like this two and four's multiplication array, two and five is at seven, four and seven is at eight, five and eight is at five, and seven and eight is at 56. If I use such kind of algorithm, I may lose out the information. And that's why, as you said, we are using some temporary variable, something like previous and current two pointer technique I'm using with a sliding window approach. So now my window is of two, four, and five. In that only, I'm doing all the logic. So, first of all, so let's first of all create for in between logic. So, for previous is two, current is at four, which is a of i, and next is a of i plus one. Okay next logic is a of i equals to previous multiply by next so 2 multiply by 5 10 will happen that a of i will happen current before storing it to that current i'll mark it out as previous so my previous element will become 4 so i'm storing that 4 in a temporary variable correct and then my next will become my current and in that way with just one variable previous or current it can happen or and why we need previous and current both because once you go further you have to store your let's say at seven you have to find it out your five and eight all so next also and previous also correct so in because of that i'm storing with two variable you can try optimize it with one variable as well okay so in a simplistic way your logic will be step one update a of zero first of all and use the current value first of all so in previous a of zero i have stored then loop from one to n minus one until the last a of i equals to current a of i equals to previous multiply by a of i plus one and then previous equal to current so again you are storing the temporary variable into previous that's it and then at the end, you are updating the last previous multiply by a of n minus 1 in a simplistic way. 
Now, can I ask you guys to write it down this thing in code? This is your assignment for second days. Code for this question. Whenever you're writing down the code, let's say you are writing down in IDO1, you are creating your own library. I don't mind. You create your login over here. You can see the screen, right? You can sign in uh, using this. And with your account, you can keep all the list of codes that you have written. Make sure that whatever the code you write it down, write it down the complexity also along with that space and time complexity. That's the first thing. And you can send me this link that it is your assignment. Let's say you don't want to do that. You can create your Git repo with all the questions. Something, if I give simple example, okay, Git repo of, uh, let's say, Java DSA question. I'm just giving example. You have to create your own algorithm, own Git repo like that. So see, this guy has created his lead code study plan, lead code daily challenges, and he has given all the questions like this in October, whatever the session question he has created, he has. So same way you guys also do this so that whenever in future you want to, let's say right now you got a job after five years, you are again switching, right? You can also refer to your old code library and do that so that if it is your code, you'll remember. So make sure that you are giving ample documentation, something like why this loop I have written, what I have written, what is the logic that I have written in your own word, keeping documentation and then write it down such code and create such library. I prefer that you create Git library. But in a way that let's say you don't want to do that, you can create this library as well. And the best approach is that run a code over here, create a Git entry also over here. And whatever you have run the code, create an entry in this as well. Let's say here you have written a code with a question and answer. Here, just after one line, the way I have also written over here, right? Write it down your IDO1 link that here it is a running code. That's it. That is the best way to document and create a Git repo. If you are doing like this, I'm giving you 99.99% .99 chance that you will not fail even Amazon's interview. Whatever the sessions questions I'm taking up, the toughest you can solve is Amazon's with that. So any other companies like uh, Mintra, Flipkart, Microsoft, all those things also you can clear easily. But if you have done practice like this for DSA, for HLDLD also we'll take it up. Let's say for backend, obviously the backend thing you'll have to do. Let's say if you are going into data structure, uh, 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 what you can say, uh, Python and uh, machine learning and data science, obviously you have to correct data science ka all the logic and all that things. But in DSA, you won't fail if you're following my instruction. And if you won't follow, then I cannot help you later on. So if you're following, doing all assignments and submitting on time to me, even if it's not on time, but you are submitting, then I'm giving you guarantee that you can solve any DSA interview for the, any point of time. Yes, you may have to refer after five years or five years or three years if you are out of practice of DSA and some new questions you have to come up clear because in four years of timeline, pretty some 5,000, 7,000 new questions would have been created in, in market. But if you solve some plenty hands of 100, you'll be again good to go. But the logic will be here in your Git repo that you are writing it down over here. This guy, he has created, let's say, 1,000 questions. But still, this is useless. He will not go through 1,000 questions again. The best, the necessary best questions with which all the logic is again refreshed in your mind, those 100 questions only should be into your Git repo. Those 100 are essentials, top 100, you can say, which I'll to cover it up, in which all the types of logic will be there. Okay? So if you're following that, then only then I can give you guarantee that, that you'll solve any DSA interview question. DSA, the same way, low level design and high level design, but you should follow this. Okay, so with that, I'm stopping the session over here.